Today we're going to cover a logistic functions. A logistic equation, what it comes from, is in populations growth is not always unlimited, but may have an upper limit, L, where population can no longer be sustained as time increases. So let's say you have an enclosed section of land and you are I don't know, you've got rabbits or something. And so you've got your rabbits in this enclosed structure. Well, that structure or that amount of land can only hold a certain amount before it's overwhelmed by rabbits or, you know, you don't have enough food or if they were eating the grass, there's not enough grass. And so there's a sustained carrying capacity. So it can only have so many rabbits before there's too many. So... This growth model is described by a logistic differential equation. So here's your differential equation. dy dt equals ky times 1 minus y over L. L is going to be your carrying capacity. Okay, it's also known as the limit, which is why it's L. Okay, so it's the limit of the number of things that you can have, whether it be an animal or whether we're going to do something with a rumor that's going around. Um, whatever it is, it's its limit. It's as high as you can go. Now, K is just going to be a constant. It's just going to be a number. Y is part of your function, you know, dy, dt. So the Y is going to be in there. And that's just going to be a variable. Now, the equation that is a solution for this differential equation, meaning if you were to integrate it, which we will not have to prove or do, we just need to know the equation, is going to be y is equal to L, L being your carrying capacity, over 1 plus B, B is just going to be a constant, times E to the negative KT. Again, K is, is just a constant, so it's going to be some number. Um, and T is going to stand for time. Okay? So, as we're looking here, I've got a little picture to kind of help us see what's going on. So, as time goes on, here's time going on, you've got your population density. So, how many people or whatever animals that you've got going on. Now, in the beginning, growth, you've got acceleration. And in here, you're going to be increasing. You're going to be increasing quickly, okay? And then you're going to get to your inflection point. Your inflection point is going to be when your carrying capacity is half, and that's when your slope is going to be the greatest. Okay? And then you're going to start decreasing or deceleration. until you get to a steady state. There's your carrying capacity. That's as high as you can go. So up here is your L. Okay. So halfway through is L divided by two. All the way up here, there's your carrying capacity. Now, it says note that as T goes to infinity, Y goes to L. So that's kind of in the concept of limit. Your carrying capacity so let's just say y is going to go to l. So the limit is t approaches infinity. As you get further and further and further, you're, reading, you're reaching this um, capacity. That's as much as you can have in, in, in an area. I mean, even you can think about it um, just in terms of blocks. If you have building blocks and you have a box that they are stored in, well, if somebody gives you their building blocks, they're not going to fit into your box. Your box only has a certain amount of space to hold them, that's its carrying capacity. Um, or even like a bag. You can only fit so many clothes in a bag when you're going on vacation. It reaches its carrying capacity. It's kind of the same concept, so you can't overfill things. All right, so let's look down here. Our example number one. A state game commission releases 40 elk into a game refuge. After five years, the elk population is 104. The commission believes that the environment can support no more than 4,000 elk. That's going to be your carrying capacity. You can't have any more than 4,000 elk in this refuge. 
Okay? The growth rate of the elk population is given by the differential equation right here. Now notice they didn't tell you what K was, but they did tell you what your carrying capacity is. And notice where it is. Now again, we're just going to want to take a look at our equation. I'm just copying this up from above. It helps you to determine where all your things are. Now, notice that we had y in our equation from above, and they made it p for population. That's fine. But this right here, we just need to make sure we know is our l. Okay? Now, our population goes from 40 to 4,000. 40 because that's where they started. They put 40 elk into the game refuge. 4,000 because that's as many as they think they can fit in there. Okay? So write a model for the elk population in terms of T. So we're looking to write this equation. Y equals L over 1 plus B E to the negative K T. Okay. That's what we want to write. Now, you know what L is. L is 4,000. Your carrying capacity. You also know that when time equals zero, you had 40 elk. You also know that when time equaled five, you had 104 elk. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these two numbers to find our B and our K. Okay? So the first thing you're going to do is do this one. You're going to plug a zero in for T. That's your time. Okay, when you're doing that, it's going to get rid of this entire statement right here. Because e to the 0 is just going to equal 1. So what's going to be nice about that is that we're going to be left with b that we can solve for. So let's plug it in. So y is equal to 40. We have 4,000 divided by 1 plus b e to the negative k times 0. Well, K times zero is just going to be zero. So this is just going to go to one. So you're going to have 40 equals 4,000 divided by one plus B. So let's solve for B. 40 times one plus B is equal to 4,000. Divide by 40 and you get 100. So B is going to equal 99. So we now have our new equation. Y is equal to 4,000 over 1 plus 99 E to the negative K T. Now, we're not done because we want to find K. So now we're going to use this statement right here. So we've got 104 is equal to 4,000 over 1 plus 99 e to the negative k times 5. Because that was what our time was, times 5. So now we've got to solve this problem. Okay, well, it's going to start off just like what we did over here. We're going to multiply by the 1 plus b. We're going to multiply by this whole denominator. So you're going to have them to come over here. 104 times the 1 plus 99e to the negative 5k equals 4,000. Okay? Now, you're going to want to divide by 104. Plus 99e to the negative 5k equals 4,000 divided by 104. Now, when you're doing this, where did my calculator go? Oh dear, calculator gone. Alright, that's fine. I got the numbers. Um, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you've got three decimal places. So you get 38.462. Okay? So 4,000 divided by 104 is 38.462. Make sure you're keeping those three decimals. Now, you want to subtract one. So when we subtract one, we have 99 e to the negative 5k is equal to 37.462 and then you want to divide by 99 so you end up, I'm going to come over here e to the negative 5k 
37.462 divided by 99 is 0.378. Now we're kind of stuck. We got to get that k out of the exponent in order to solve. So how do we get that k out of the exponent? Think about log land and how you can get those values out of exponents. If you did an ln on both sides, because remember, you can't do it on one side and not on the other, then this can come to the front. Negative 5k ln of e equals the ln of 0.378. Okay? Now, ln of e is just equal to 1, so we don't have to worry about that. That's just 1. And then you want to divide by negative 5, and you're going to get your answer. So if you did the ln of 0.378 divided by a negative 5, you're going to get 0.195. So, I used up all my paper here for this final answer here. We've got y equals 4,000 over 1 plus b was 99 e to the negative 0.195 t. Okay. 4,000 divided by 1 plus 99 e to the negative 0.195 t. So that was a long problem. We had to do a lot of stuff in order to first solve for the b and then we had to plug in the b and then plug in that new information and solve for the k. Um, I wrote down a lot of steps, so there are some steps that you could um, you could probably combine. So here when you're multiplying but then dividing by 104, you could probably do that all in one step. Subtract 1 and then divide by 99, you could probably do that all in one step as well. You don't have to write down all those pieces. Make sure you're writing down the ln though, you want to make sure that you've got that. Now, in a regular problem, you would have to memorize, or a regular test, you'd have to memorize these formulas. But remember, our AP test is going to be open notes. So you're not going to have to memorize these formulas. You're going to have them there for you. Um, so that will help. That will help not having to memorize those. All right, well, that was just A. So let's go to B. Use the model to estimate the elk population after 15 years. Okay, well, that's super easy. You now have an equation and you want to plug in 15 in for your time, okay? I'm just going on to regular paper since I've run out of room here on my sheet. So y is equal to 4,000 divided by 1 plus 99e e to the negative 0.195 times 15. So when you are doing that, let me try and find my calculator. Hold on a minute. In your calculator, I would use alpha y equals. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to alpha y equals. I'm going to get that fraction. And so then I'm going to have the top, 4,000. And the bottom, 1 plus 99 e to the negative 0.195 times 15. You hit enter, and you find out that your answer is 633.6. Three, three. Y is equal to six thirty three point six three three. Okay. All right. Part C. Find the limit of the model as t approaches infinity. Well, that's easy too because remember, look up here. Note that as t approaches infinity, y is approaching l. So. The limit as t approaches infinity of your equation is equal to L. So for part C, your answer is just going to be L, which is 4,000. Now, if we were to look at it, if we were to do the limit as t approaches infinity of 4,000 over 1 plus 99e e to the negative 0.195t, t is going to infinity. 
Well, if t is going to infinity, that's e to the negative infinity, which is just going to go to zero. So this right here is just going to zero. So if this is going to zero, you are left with 4,000 over 1. So it's just equal to 4,000. Now, that's going to happen all the time. Remember, as we said in our notes, as t goes to infinity, your y, your function, is going to your carrying capacity. It's the whole point of this. You've got that horizontal asymptote of y right here. So <clears throat> you don't have to go through this whole limit process in order to get the answer. Okay? All right, number two. Number two. All right, a certain rumor spreads through a community at a rate of this differential equation dy dt is equal to 2y 1 minus y. Right, let's look at our original equation. We had dy dt is equal to ky times 1 minus y over l. Now if we're comparing these two equations, your k is right there. So k is equal to 2. So you might want to write that. k is equal to 2. And then right here is your l divided by this L right here. Well, how could they get away with not writing it? What number could it be where they don't have to write it in the denominator? And it's going to be a 1. So L is equal to 1. Now, we're talking about proportions here. So since we're talking about proportions, 1 means that 100% of the people know the rumor. Um, because if you were to make that decimal, so to speak, a percent, you would be moving this decimal place to, so you've got a hundred percent of the people. So that's why your carrying capacity is one. Because once everyone knows the rumor, then you can't go any further. Everybody knows it. Okay? So, moving on. It says, what proportion of the population has heard the rumor when it is spreading the fastest? Well, let's take a look at the beginning here. In the beginning of our notes, we said the L divided by 2 is when the slope is the greatest. That's when it's going the fastest. So, for part A, it's going to be when L is divided by 2. Well, L was equal to 1. So, in this case, it's going to be 1 half. So, half of the population has heard the rumor when it's spreading the fastest. So, think about it. When it's getting started, you're telling a whole bunch of people, and so we're going faster and faster and faster and faster. And then once half the people know, then it's going to slow down. Because, you know, if you're trying to find someone who hasn't heard it yet, it's going to take you a little bit longer. So things are going to slow down until finally the last person knows. So it's faster, 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 and then it slows down as it reaches the carrying capacity. All right, so if at time equals zero, 10% of the people have heard the rumor, Find the function, find y as a function of t. Alright, so when y of 0 equals, now I'm not going to put a 10 right here because I didn't have a 100 right here. Okay, think about it. If you have 100% and I move that decimal place 2, that's going to equal a 1. Well, if I have 10% and I move my decimal place, it's going to equal 0.1. So this is going to be 0.1. Because again, I'm changing a percent into a decimal. Okay, you got to be consistent. Like if this had said 100% of the people, then you easily could have said 10%. But because it was a decimal, you have to make sure that your um, value is a decimal right there. So we are trying to find our y function. So y is equal to L over 1 plus B E to the negative K T. I'm just writing the formula down. Now we have some of this information. We know K and we know L. So we can go ahead and plug those in. y is equal to 1 over 1 plus B E to the negative K T. So they already gave us the K, so yay, that's easier than the last problem, we don't have to find that K, so we can just go ahead and find the B. So, you plug in your values, you got 0.1 is equal to 1 over 1 plus B, E to the negative 2 times 0. 
Well, so that's going to go away because e to the 0 is just going to equal 1. So you have 0.1 times 1 plus b equals 1. When you divide by 0.1, you're going to end up with 10. Okay. Don't believe me. Look, 1 divided by 0.1 is equal to 10. Okay. So b is equal to 9. So you end up with the equation y is equal to 1 over 1 plus 9 b, oops, 1 plus 9 e, to the negative 2 t. Okay, that's the answer to part b. Alright, so then it says part c. At what time is the rumor spreading the fastest? Well, the rumor was spreading the fastest when half of the population knew. Here's our formula for the function. So we want to set the function equal to the half and find the time. So 1 half is equal to 1 over 1 plus 9e e to the negative 2 t. So we cross multiply in order to find this. So that's 1 plus 9. e to the negative 2t is equal to 2. Okay, 1, all of this times 1 is all of that. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, subtract your 1. Then you want to divide by 9. Now, I'm not going to make this a decimal. I'm just going to leave it 1 ninth. You could make it 0 0.111. Maybe if you do at the end, we'll take a look and, and compare how off your decimals are with mine in the end. Just remember that if you're rounding in the middle of an equation and you're doing some sort of multiple choice problem, then um, you got to make sure that you round and leave some leeway at the end. Okay? And um, I know that there's no multiple choice in the AP, but you might have one on my test. I got, I can't remember. All right, to solve this, just like we did before, I got to do ln of both sides. Negative 2t can come in the front. Negative 2t ln e equals the ln of 1 9. Now ln e is just equal to 1. So in your calculator, you're doing the ln of 1 9. Nope, nope, nope. The ln of 1 9 divided by the negative 2. And it's going to give you 1 point. 0986, so 1.099. Now, they didn't give us any kind of value, so we don't know if that's one hour, one day, one minute. Um, we don't have any kind of units, but it's 1.099 somethings, and so that's A, B, and C. All right, our last problem, number three. So now this time, they gave us the y function, okay? So let's go ahead and write our y equation down. We've got y is equal to L over 1 plus B E to the negative KT, just so that we can find out our numbers here. Um, you do have to be careful, though. Our L is not 40. The reason is, take a look at this number right here. That number needs to be a 1. So in order for it to be a 1, this would have to be, I mean, in order for, sorry, in order for this to be L, this would have to be a 1. So we're going to look at how we find our L in a minute. But just be careful. you got to make sure these things match up. Now, B, mm, again, is not really 6 because this isn't one. So be careful, we might not need our B right now, so let's just be careful and let's wait a second. We can find our K. Negative KT, well, negative is already there, the T is already there, so K is just gonna be a one. So we do know that K is equal to one. That's really the only thing I know at this time, first off. Now, it says, what is the population at time equals zero? So all I'm doing is plugging in a zero right here. So if you plug in a 0 right there, this e to the 0 is going to go away. It's going to be 1. 
So you're left with 40 divided by 4 plus 6, which is just 40 divided by 10, or 4. So at time t equals 0, your population is 4. So if we were thinking about what we did in the beginning, um, when, when they had the elk and they said at time 0 you had 40 elk, well, we said y of 0 equals 40. This is the same thing that we've just found out right here y of 0 is equal to 4. So at the very beginning, the population at the beginning, whatever it is that we're introducing, you only have 4 of them. Okay? What is the carrying capacity? So we want to find L. Now like I said, you need this to be equal to 1. What would you divide by in order to make this equal to 1? You would divide it by 4. So essentially you're dividing each one of these things by 4 to make this a 1. So 40 divided by 4 is going to be our carrying capacity, and so that's just going to be 10. Okay, our carrying capacity is 10. What is the constant K? Well, we already talked about that. That was the only thing we actually could find just directly by looking at the equation. K is equal to 1. Okay, so now we have Y of 0 equals 4. We have that L is equal to 10, and we have that K is equal to 1. So the question is, when does the population reach half of the carrying capacity? All right, well, half of the carrying capacity is 5. Here's your equation for the population. So 40 divided by 4 plus 6e to the negative t. We want to solve for t. So we've done this a couple of times now. So if you want to hit pause and go see if you can try and find what t is, that would be good. I'll go through the process in a sec. All right, so multiplying both sides by 4 plus 6e to the negative t. Then I'm going to divide by 5. Uh, I'm going to subtract my 4. And then I'm going to divide by 6. Now again, I could make this a decimal. Or I could just leave this a fraction. If I leave it a fraction, I'm not rounding in the middle of the problem, which is fine. Now, I do believe in number one, we rounded in the middle of the problem. Um, we didn't have to, but it was it was such a big number, 4,000 divided by 104. It, I think it's negligible, the, the decimals that you're going to be off in the end. Do the ln of both sides. Negative T ln E equals ln of 4 6. So, we have the ln of 4 over 6 divided by negative 1, or just make it negative. t is equal to 0 0.405. So, again, they didn't give us um, any kind of units, but at 0 0.405 is when we're going to have um, half of our carrying capacity. All right, now, this last one says, find the initial value problem. So that's saying when y of 0 equals 4, I took that from up A, I want you to write the dy dt equation. So let's first start off by writing the formula. The formula is ky times 1 minus y over L. Okay? Now, we have all of our pieces of information. We just have to fill it in. So dy dt is equal to k, which was 1, y, so we can just write y, times 1 minus y over l. Our l was equal to 10. So when y of 0 equals 4, your, we need this piece, and we need this piece. This piece was just so that we know where all of our things went, so we know where all of our pieces were going. Now, I think where was it? It was in the back of the old book. They wrote this differently. They didn't write it in this manner. Um, I actually would prefer it in this manner. However, they pulled out a one-tenth. And they made it look like this. So if you saw that, so let's go with multiple choice. If you see this and they pulled out a one-tenth, perfectly acceptable. 
Um, again, in order to get your carrying capacity, you'd have to multiply it in because again, look, this has to be one. If we're looking at our formula, your formula has to be one in order to get your L. So you would know that your L isn't one right here because this isn't a one. Kind of like the same way we had to know from here that this needed to be a one and since it wasn't. Now notice I didn't have to worry about the B. We didn't use the B in any of any part of this problem, but B would have been six over four. Okay, so because we were dividing everything by four in order to make that equal to one. So just keep that in mind um, as you're going through and you're seeing some problems. We are going to look at um, some multiple choice problems. We'll have those, uh, I think, next Tuesday. So um, in the meantime, this was Friday's lesson or whenever it is that you're doing it. And then you've got the homework that follows along. So use these notes to go ahead and do the practice problems. And I hope you have a great day.